All right, everyone, welcome to Principles of Microeconomics uh, video series. So first off, we're going to introduce uh, the first part of chapter one, key concepts, and just looking at micro versus macroeconomics. So you are in microeconomics right now, and microeconomics is the study of how households and firms make their decisions and interact in the market. Uh, whereas macroeconomics is this idea of looking at economy-wide phenomena such as inflation, unemployment, economic growth, getting out of recessions, exchange rates. So all those, most of the things that you hear about on the news would be more macroeconomics, whereas most of the things that determine how consumers behave and how firms make their decisions on how many units to produce, if they want to enter a market or not, uh, different impacts of introducing taxations, environmental problems, and different things like that. Deals more with microeconomics. What is economics? Well, economics is the study of how society manages its scarce resources to satisfy its unlimited wants. So we are dealing with a bunch of resources, whether it's land, labor, and capital, and all of those are scarce, scarce in the sense that we have limited amounts, but we have a lot of wants. So whether it's our time or the amount of money that we have or the amount of land that we could access, it's limited. So we need to make choices. So economics is a science of choices. And one of those big choices, when we look at it from a gov governmental standpoint, is should we aim for efficiency or equity and fairness? So in this class, we're going to be looking at more the efficiency standpoint. We're looking a lot for efficiency, but in reality, both are of interest to politicians or different people uh, managing the economy. So efficiency is trying to get the most we can out of our scarce resources, whereas equity or fairness is trying to distribute it equally among members, not necessarily completely equally, but like fairly so that there's no extremely rich and extremely poor uh, situation. But the goals usually conflict with one another. If we think of a high income tax or an income tax that goes up as the in level of income rises, we would think, well, that's for the richer people to pay a higher uh, a proportion of income tax and for some of that money to be transferred back to the poor people. So the goal is to redistribute wealth from rich to poor. But the problem is that this taxing very heavily, if you get more and more, imagine you would be taxed 80% if you make more than 150000 well, it reduces the incentive to work in that country or to work legally declared uh, salary and not to go to a tax haven it reduces that incentive so when people work less we have an underutilization of human resources and especially the extremely intelligent or an extremely efficient human resources the ones that are very productive and therefore because those people are working less we could see that because of that we'll probably not produce as much as we could so the goal of efficiency has conflicted with the goal of equity. Uh, the goal of equity has conflicted with the goal of efficiency. So when we think of economics as a science, uh, economics, economists use models to describe how the economy works. We make certain assumptions to make sure that uh, things are, are clearer and, uh, and we, we just keep the important stuff. And in practice, we use graphs and equations to construct models. But in this class here, we're going to focus on graphs. If you get in more at the intermediate level, you're going to start using equations. And the main reason why is when you use a graph, you're normally looking at the relationship between maybe price and quantity. But over time, you'll notice that the quantity uh, demanded of a good, it doesn't only depend on the price of its own good, it could depend on income levels, the price of other related, uh, related goods, uh, I could deal with uh, personal taste and different things like that. So graphs are limited, but they're very good at explaining simple stories. So how do we prove or disprove a hypothesis? Well, 
we see a phenomena. If we see something and we think there's a link between how people are paid and their motivation at work, well, we notice that, we develop a theory, we create a few hypotheses, and hopefully through observations, through data, we verify or we reject our hypothesis. So some economists uh, deal more with creating a theory. The other economists try to look at theories and try to prove whether they're right or not. And we could also resort to simulations to try to determine uh, what would be the impact of certain things. So some of my past research resorted on simulations to try to see what's the impact of a carbon tax or a carbon tax in conjunction with a border tax adjustment on uh, the Canadian economy. Naturally, we haven't adopted that yet, so it's hard to verify unless you use simulations. So here is the basic intro of economics, and we're going to move on to the concept of opportunity cost.